Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 22nd of June 2021. Uh, we're looking uh, yesterday and today at the end of chapter 4 of the book of James and then the rest of the week we're going to uh, look at some of the highlights that we've had so far in this study. Uh, yesterday we were looking at how it's easy to make plans without God and how we need to make sure that uh, we, we don't make plans without him because really in this world, we're just a, a, a mist, a vapour that appears for a little while and then vanishes. We don't have any great significance here on earth. But God has a plan and he has an eternal plan and he wants us to fit in with that eternal plan. And whenever we do that, then the things that we do actually will last. So today we come to verse 15 and we find the alternative, the alternative to making plans without God, James tells us here. So let's read together. Verses 15, 16 and 17. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. So James immediately comes in with this word, instead. Here is the alternative. He's saying, okay, you've made plans without God. Instead of doing that, this is what you ought to say. So this is the alternative. This is the, the positive outlook, as it were. And again, James here is showing us the importance of our words, the importance of what it is we say. He says, instead, you ought to say. He's already told us what the, the foolish person says. Now he's giving us some wisdom so that we can say the right thing. And he says here, you're to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. So if it is the Lord's will, that's one of those phrases that is, that is used. It's a common phrase that's used at the time and people will say it um, to, to turn to God. I suppose it's a little bit like our phrase, DV, God willing. And uh, as I was saying on Sunday, uh, that has fallen out of uh, favour greatly and, and yet it's something that we need to remember, especially with all that's gone on this last year and we've seen how uh, futile it is to make plans without realising that God can stop those plans in an instant. I suppose in a way we've always known that God can make changes to our plans as individuals. But for God then to make a changes to the world's plans in an instant is really something that we've never seen before. And we realise that uh, we need to say God willing, that it's not just a, a trite little thing to say now and again, but it's something important that we need to make sure that we're actually living by in our lives. And so if it is the Lord's will, then that is the question that uh, we're to ask whenever we go to plan anything uh, and whatever we do with that. So that's uh, important that we do those things uh, and that we say those things. So then also um, we see here that uh, this idea of, of thinking about God's will, well, it convicts our hearts that God is sovereign. It tells us that God is the one who is in control, that he's the one with the plan. If we're saying, if it is the Lord's will, it will happen, then we're saying, well, look, God's in control. The Lord is the one who makes these decisions. And therefore, we need to look to him and we need to trust him to lead us. God is in control of all that, um, all that is said and all that's done, and we need to trust in him. And James here is saying, in this word, instead, once again, James is saying to business people, there's an alternative way to conduct business. There are different things that you can do. You don't just have to do things the way the world does them. And the world doesn't cope well with that because the world has set ideas as to how we live, how we react, how we talk to one another. 
And James is saying, instead, go for the alternative. Go for the different way around this. He's saying to business people, look, in, instead of just making plans and following uh, the latest ideas, consult God about it. Ask God about your work. Ask him about the plans that you're making uh, and see what he has to say. And he's saying here, if it is the Lord's will, we will live. That James is saying, don't even take for granted the fact that you will live. So therefore, you're making a plan. Don't take for granted the fact that that plan will come to fruition. But more than that, come back a step. Don't even assume that you will live. God makes those decisions. And therefore, you trust in him and say, if it's the Lord's will, I'll live. But we're not guaranteed anything. Don't take life for granted. Just over a week ago, if you were watching uh, the football, Christian Eriksen um, had heart failure on the pitch. And there were those terrible scenes that if you were watching the match live of them trying to resuscitate him on the pitch. There was a man who had run out of the changing room 40 minutes earlier to play a game of football at the peak of physical condition, ready to take on Europe. And a few moments later was lying dead on the pitch. They resuscitated him and they brought him round. But he'll probably not play football ever again at a competitive level. So if it's the Lord's will, we live. If it's the Lord's will, the plans come to fruition. So that all points to our position before God. All the words that are contained in this are showing that we as human beings are really ignorant, we're frail, we're dependent upon God and therefore it's essential to be a believer, to be someone who says if it's the Lord's will. That's an essential part of being a follower of Jesus. Now of course this does not stop us making plans We can all make plans. We can all uh, look ahead and decide what it is we're going to be doing. But we need to submit the plans that we make to God and ask him, is this right? Is this what you want me to do? Is there anything else that I should be doing instead? You see, we please God by following his will for our lives. So as we move on to verse 16. As it is, you boast and brag. This, however, is the opposite of what we should be doing. So uh, James is saying, instead, here's what you can say. But as it is, this is what you're actually doing. So instead of saying, if it's the Lord's will, you're actually boasting and bragging. These people are not living in the way that James thinks they should live as Christians. They're boasting about the plans that they're making. Boast and brag. Literally, the Greek here says, you boast in your arrogances. So they're arrogantly making these plans. They're arrogantly saying that this is what they're going to do. And then they boast in that arrogance. So it's level upon level upon level of turning away from God, trusting in themselves instead of God. When we boast about our own achievements, we sin. But we need to be careful here that not all boasting is sin. Because there are certain things that we're told in Scripture that we can boast about. We can boast about Christ's death. We can boast in our own weaknesses as Paul did. We can boast in God's strength and those type of things we are able to boast about. But if we're boasting in our arrogances, boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. And then on to the last verse, verse 17. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. And this then is a, is a strange little word here because verse 17 almost seems to be disconnected with the rest of the passage. It just 
pops up here at the end. It's a good statement. It makes sense, but it doesn't seem to link to anything. And yet James is saying it does. He says anyone then, so then or therefore is based upon what's gone before. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. We should submit to God's will. And that's the good thing that we should do. So whenever we don't do it, we fail to do the good thing. And this is all the good things already mentioned in the letter. James has continually, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, been telling us the good things that we can be doing. And here we're told if we know about them, then we should be doing them. If we know about them and don't do anything, then we're sinning. So you've been listening to the letter so far. You've heard all the things that you should do. Now go and do it or else you're sinning. And here we are all to live in humility and submission. And therefore, if we don't live with humility and submission, we're not doing the good that we know we should do. And here in in these passages, and I suppose in, in the previous passage, uh, verses 13 to 14, uh, we have a theology of business. James is here telling us how we're to live our working lives. Now, many people would say, well, look, that's fine. You be a Christian, but you keep it at home. Don't bring it into the workplace. We don't want to hear about your Christianity here. You just go and, and, and do what you want to. But James is saying, no, if you're a Christian, then it affects the way that you work. If you're a Christian, then it impacts the decisions that you make at work as well as the decisions you make at home. And so therefore, this is what you want to do instead. So let's bow before God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you once again for the very practical help that James gives us. That we are to remember day by day that if it is your will, then we will do these things. But if it isn't, Lord, then we won't even have the breath to breathe for our next breath. So, Lord, help us day by day to remember our own mortality and to trust continually in you, to accept what you have done for us and to trust you and follow you. For Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.